sorry about that. Um, the phone ran out of storage space, so I had to sync it to my iTunes and upload to the computer so I can make more room. And yeah, 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 that kind of stuff. Which is good. Actually, might be good because I was kind of going on a little too much from song to song. I'm gonna try like skip through what skip through a few if necessary. So after Supermassive Black Hole, we went to Animals, which is a nice little break from the from the more energetic and fun and um, heavy stuff that was going on to something a bit more restrained, a bit more moody. Um, and more piano-based. Even though this song did eventually build into a more big and flamboyant and guitar-driven song. In fact, um, this is probably one of the songs that's grown on me the most because of the live concert. And then we went to, then we went to Bliss from, uh, from Origin of Symmetry. And then this this song, then Knights of Sidonia, which is pretty much considered Muse's magnum opus, even by people who don't consider it their favorite Muse song, it is, like, their... It's basically a song that people bet would best remember Muse by, like, 50 years down the line, basically. And, as it would be implied... I say implied a lot in this video. But, yeah, it's true. It, it was one of the highlights of the night just because of how much energy he, Matt and, and the guys put into the, their performance, even more so than with some of the other songs. Because they knew that it was a centerpiece of sorts for the concert. Now, um, you... Now, uh, one guy, guy that was commenting on a post was saying that shouldn't this be the closer? Well, um, I, while I do think that this would make a good closer, the song that ended up being the closer um, during this show, I think, make kind of makes more sense as the closer. And, I, and um, yeah, it's kind of good they um, put this in the middle. And then after that, they went to a song called... Uh, oh, by the way... I'm, even though I've never heard of this song called Monty Jam, which um, maybe it was from a live album, because I have no idea, because I've never heard the song before. It's like it's like a three-minute instrumental piece, which I do really like. And I, I just want to say, in general, that there was never a moment of weakness to be found in this entire concert, which is a very unique thing. It's like there was never a moment where I was like, okay, I guess I gotta get through this to get to the good stuff. No, everything was the good stuff. And then after Monty Jam went to Explorers, and, you know, I really want to, like, talk about all the, like, light shows, and because there, there was, like, a huge spectacle and, like, a ton of effects and screen stuff, and it was just ridiculous what was like, what was going on around these performances, but I have trouble associating them from song to song. I mean, I know that with, um, with Animals, which I forgot to mention earlier, there was a bunch of, like, black and white political imagery on the screens. Anyway, um, I'm trying to figure... And the Explorers, that was another kind, kind of, a more soft, for lack of a better term, song. Which then built into, went right into Time is Running Out, and then Liquid State, which is, if, in case you don't know already, one of two songs on the second law, um, along with Big Freeze, which they didn't perform, unfortunately. But I don't mind that. That their bassist, Chris... I can never remember his last name, but it's really long and British. Like, only British people would be able to remember it, or pronounce it, or anything. Anyway. Yes, and uh, Chris's voice is actually very good. Not not really on the level of Matt, but it, it suits the song, and um, 
Yeah, yeah, he did a great job at it. Then came Madness, the big single currently. Um, and um, I know that this isn't really a compliment or a ne or a negative, but I still kind of wonder. Like in every single live performance of the song I've seen, they've perf they've done it in a different key, like a key up or down. I don't know. I, I should probably know that better since I'm a musician, but. Yeah, I, I still kind of question why they do that. I mean, I don't mind it. It works just as well. But, yeah, it's really kind of weird. But, anyway, this was also a highlight of... This was also a very imp impressive performance, like I keep saying. And, uh, probably the one, one of the ones that, um... That garnered the most applause. And, like, the most audience reaction. Because, again, it's a big single right now. It's st even, but still, that's not really to say it's an insult because I do really like the song too. Like, there's no song this entire set list that I don't like. In fact, there's no Muse album that I don't like. And thankfully, even like the one that I'm like the most underwhelmed by, um, Showbiz, which uh, no, which is no nothing negative to Showbiz, is just the least, the least great. For lack of a better, like I have trolls set, I have trolls describing that without without coming off. Anyway, I'm I'm kind of getting off topic here. Uh, yeah. Where we at? Oh yeah, madness. Then we went right into follow me, which unusually enough features Matt Bellamy not using a guitar or a piano. He's just singing, but I think it works for both this song and the song that will follow. I'll talk about that later. But this is, even though I've said, like, oh, this is probably, like, the most audience reaction, or this is probably the best overall performance, this is the best, vo one of the best vocal performances of the night. You can tell that just Matt has this huge amount of passion in this song and his lyrics, no matter how maybe, for, I, I don't mean this to sound negative, but vague, they may be. I mean, I know they're about his son, because I've heard him say that in an interview. But I think, no, vague wouldn't be right. I think universal would be a better term. Anyway, it was just a very powerful moment. Those, like, five minutes that, that song ran for. And then came Undisclosed Desires, which is the synth-pop song on The Resistance. One of my personal favorites, even though I'm... Even though I wasn't really in the whole internet music thing in 2009 when I was introduced to Muse through The Resistance, I imagine that song would be very, very polarizing. Maybe not to the point of unsustainable, but still very polarizing. Oh, crap, this is really going long. Yeah, I did a good job with that one. Then Plug In Baby, another, like, one of the heavier songs. And then Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, and actually, the way they picked Stockholm Syndrome, they did a very interesting little visual thing with the screens. They had a little virtual roulette that, like, where a ball dropped, and this lasted for about a minute, where a ball dropped and it landed between either Stockholm Syndrome or Newborn from a uh, from, or from Origin of Symmetry. And I'm not sure if this is planned. It, it probably is. What am I thinking? I'm not that stupid. But yeah, it landed on Stockholm Syndrome. And they played that. And then after that, they played the second part of the Second Law title track, Isolated System. And th for this, they decided to take this upside-down pyramid of screens and make it not upside-down. Like, they brought it down on themselves. And they projected screens all around it, and they played this, like, five-minute or six-minute instrumental track. It's kind of, yeah, this instrumental track from inside this pyramid of screens that projected the, the very abstract music video around it. 
Is this about to run out of time? Because I feel like it's run out of time. Oh, where are you going? Yeah, that was a very interesting part of the concert. In a very good way. And, af and after that, they crawled out. They basically crawled out of this pyramid of screens to play the final song in the regular set, um, Uprising. Which I think would be 